get to a place as a business owner that you can handle criticism and you're secure in who you are and what you do as a business because it will only make you better. This is the Contractor Files Podcast. Your hosts, Ethan McNeil and Trent Keith, take a deep dive into the construction and remodeling industry to uncover keys to success and pitfalls to avoid. Hey, welcome to our 12th podcast. Number 12. Yes. We're back with another topic today. Yep. How to gauge customer satisfaction and use it to promote future business. Or your business. I don't know if I meant to write future business. Oh, okay. but that works. Future business. <laughs> well, that's what I thought it meant. Future business for <laughs> yes, you. Yes, there you go. Right. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, so we're here with a whole list of things. Actually, this is going to be one of our shorter ones. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'll say a shorter one, then we'll get to talking, and it may be a little Yeah, that's one. true. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, so I'm Trent Keith. Yep, and I am Ethan McNeil. And um, we are here to help you with how to make your customers um, promote your business mm-hmm. in the future, right? Yes. Yep. Let's put it that way because That's good. there's all different things you can do. Um, a lot of it comes into how many employees do you have? How much time do they have to help make your customers um, benefit you in the future? Uh, we done things like we would send out surveys at the end of the jobs, you know, mm-hmm. and let them fill those out. And people would do that. Sometimes they would go on social media, <laughs> fill out things. Um, but if you do not push that, yes. uh, they will not do anything unless they're upset with you and they want to go on social media and badmouth your company. They yes. usually don't have to be pushed to do that. No, they, they just <laughs> do it gladly. Uh, yes. <laughs> but... Um, you know, it can be as simple as just talking with your clients when the job is done. I feel like, mm-hmm. you know, that final walkthrough when you go through and, you know, brag about how good it looks and, and make sure they're happy with everything. If you can have a little sheet or maybe something online that they would fill out right mm-hmm. then. That's yes. a real simple way um, yeah. to get their, their information, their feedback and how satisfied they were to promote your future business. That would be the first one that comes to mind for me. What was you thinking? Yeah, um, I think that uh, it's almost always good to, um, if you're meeting with the customer at the end of the job, try and get that survey filled out then. Mm -hmm. You might have them be like, uh, you know, you're sitting here watching me. (laughs) Uh, I'm not being as honest as I could be. (laughs) But um, the thing is, is if you wait, Um, even if you wait a month to send out that survey, they're probably not going to fill it out. They're just going to see that you sent an email and it wasn't important. So they're going to delete it. Um, so uh, what we used to do is send out, um, sometimes we had to send out paper invoices (laughs) and we would actually attach the, uh, surveys to those invoices and say, you know, send back your check with this in with this survey. We'd send it to them in email form whenever we sent out invoices. Basically, any time we invoice somebody, there was a a survey attached of how did you like your job, how did things go, you know, and we'll talk about what kind of questions you can ask. But um, it's super important that you push that, like Trent said, because your response rate is not going to be that great. you're going to have way more customers that will pay your invoices than that will fill out your surveys. <laughs> and um, But if you get even 10% of your customers to fill out that survey, you know, leave a nice review for you on social media, that's huge. Mm-hmm. Because so many contractors go around and say, yeah, my customers love me, but they have no proof. They don't have reviews. They don't have any customers that they can pull out of their hat of saying, yeah, this person or this person liked us. And like, that's, it's so important that you push your surveys and asking for a review mm-hmm. as a, as a contractor and do it yeah. when you're there, if you can. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I've even heard of, um, business owners who will actually 
sit with their customers and fill out the on online uh -huh. customer survey or whatever yeah. um, to try to get it done before they leave. And that's not a bad idea either. But at the same time, like Ethan said, you don't want to pressure them and make them feel like they have to give you all five stars when they really want to give you a two yes. star. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so you yeah. got to be careful. But at the same time, you do have to be a little bit adamant about mm -hmm. the survey because if you're not, yes. nine times out of ten, they're not going to fill it out. Right. And, and they really don't want to take that extra time. And the other thing is, um, the simpler the survey, the better also. you know. Yes. So most people are not going to take the time to fill out a 50 question, yeah. 50 page or, you know, 50 yes. questions, I should say. Yes. Um, they just want something simple that they can fill out. And that's easy to do. You can yes. have that lined out and make it real simple for them to do. And you've got a more likely possibility of them yes. doing that for you if you keep for it sure. short and simple. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what I think is, is a uh, good practice too is... Um, if you are asking for them to leave you a review on a social media site, um, reward them for that. Um, there's all kinds of different th ways you can reward them. Uh, we did gift cards for people. Uh, lots of businesses do gift cards. Um, you can do discounts. You can do whatever you want to do. But um, you know, you have your own internal surveys that you're doing. You don't have to reward for those if you don't want to. But when you have people leaving reviews where it's you know, on Yelp or it's on Google or it's on wherever, Facebook, then you might want to reward those people for go, taking the time to go out and find your site, find your profile and leave a good review. So that's something that you could do um, if, you, if you need help getting people to actually leave you reviews. So yeah, and that I would look at that as separate from the survey that we're talking about that you're doing with the customer. You have the customer survey that's helping you figure out what you're doing right and wrong. And then you have the reviews on social media or public places. And those are actually kind of like helping customers find you. Yes. So. Yeah. And the other thing that um, you'll want to think about also is a lot of times you do work for someone who has a business also that you've had to do things for you. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, go out of your way to give them reviews. Um, work on benefiting their business if you really like what kind of work they do and how they are with uh, their whatever, communication or whatever it is. Then go on and give them reviews and ask them to do the same. Uh -huh. yep. um, that can definitely benefit because other businesses know what it's like and how hard it is to get reviews. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have a bad review, um, contest them. Like if, unless, I mean, I, I guess I'm speaking to people who are uh, more honorable and they don't deserve the the bad review. But a one star review can really hurt your business if that's the only review you've got. So that is why you've got to get lots of reviews out there that are good. <laughs> um, so that if you do have a customer that leaves you a one star review, it doesn't crash your business. It doesn't hurt your your image. And then contest that, you know. I see lots of businesses that will respond to those one star reviews and say, hey, um, what is it that we did wrong? Please let us know. We would love to make this right. Mm -hmm. Things like that can actually make it look good. You mm -hmm. know, like you're a co company that cares. Sometimes, and this has happened more than once, those are actually, those will be spam r bots. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people just think that's funny to go out and leave yeah. one star reviews, but um, contest those with whatever site it is and get those yes. off of your profile. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's um, really difficult to build up a lot of really positive reviews. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be real easy for, like Ethan said, whether it be bots or whatever, to go on and just mess that up really quickly. Yes. So um, that is something that you want to try to keep an eye on and work through. Hopefully you can get them addressed if it's something that's not even accurate. Or like you said, if there's something that you can fix to make it better, then do that and mm -hmm. maybe they'll take that down or, or change it or whatever be the case. Yep. Um, but sometimes um, it takes extra work for these things and yeah. you really don't have a lot of time. But 
that can make a big difference in mm -hmm. uh, what happens in the future with your business and yes. your advertising. Yeah, yeah. Because if you didn't know it, reviews do matter, <laughs> and people <laughs> use those reviews on Google and other places like that to decide whether or not you're going to be the company they hire. So, yes. Um, yeah. Oh, one point that I wanted to make on the survey. So. Um, getting customers to fill out the survey is great, um, but it's, it's only as good as the questions you ask. <laughs> um, and one thing that we found to work, and you, you play around with it on your own, you know, figure out the combination you like, but we would ask them, you know, like, give us one to five stars on, you know, three or four different areas. So it'd be super quick for them to just, you know, check which star they were giving us. <laughs> and then we would ask them, what did we do well and what could we have done better? And I think that the combination of those two questions helped because some people, you know, they would start writing out what we did well and they, you know, they really like this and this and this. And then the follow up question of what could we have done better? They feel more apt to share in that box because you, they already told you how good you did, and so it's um, they don't feel like they're really coming down hard on you. They feel like they're actually able to share that, and and you're gonna take it. And we had lots of customers, good customers, ones that loved us, referred us, that would fill out that box, and they would tell us, you know, hey, well, I wished you would have done this on this job, or I wish you would have done this a little differently. And those were awesome. Those we would bring those up with our team and uh, mm -hmm. employees, and, and talk about how we were going to address you know things like that. But that's mm -hmm. that's great. You need to be able to accept criticism from your customers, your good customers, because yeah. that's going to make you a better business. And it could be um, it could be end up being like a huge key for you. Um, yes. As a customer would be honest with you and tell you, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Although it can upset your team sometimes when the customer <laughs> says, we wish the team was as nice as Ethan is when we talk to him on the phone. You know, they didn't always <laughs> want to hear that, but <laughs> no, I don't remember whatever that, that review was, you got to uh, work through it. <laughs> yes. I do remember upset uh, employees after hearing the reviews sometimes. <laughs> oh, uh, no, it's, it's just all about uh, working through that process and trying to, like Ethan said, trying to balance it to where the customer feels like they can actually give you a little bit of advice along with complimenting what they like the most, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I don't know if I want to go here or not, but um, <laughs> then maybe you should. Yeah, maybe I'm going for it. Uh, um, it's really easy to be um, insecure about your business and not able to handle criticism from your customers, constructive criticism from your your customers and even your employees. But that is something you've got to get over, and you cannot get offended every time somebody has an, a suggestion for you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, but well, maybe I don't think it's just contractors, so I'm not just picking on you. But lots of people are insecure about the work they're doing, like mm -hmm. across the board. And if you say anything about what what it is they're doing, they don't take that as a constructive criticism. They usually take it as how dare you, I know what I'm doing. And they take it almost like you're telling them they don't know what they're doing, yeah. they are not doing a good job, they're incompetent, whatever it is. It brings up all these insecurities. And this is kind of um, a little off the grid or, or a little bit different from normal advice we tell, but get to a place as a business owner that you can handle criticism and you're secure in who you are and what you do as a business because it will only make you better and it will only make your whole company better. If you can handle criticism, if you cannot, if you cannot handle feedback from your employees or your customers, there's a big issue there. Mm -hmm. You're going to shut down people from giving you good feedback mm -hmm. and the whole company is going to have this... Um, chip on their shoulder type of an atmosphere going on mm -hmm. and you don't want that that's the yeah. that's the one of the worst things you could have in your company so yeah. um do what it is you know if there's internal things you know me and trent are both uh christians and we are very much into that and believe that that's um 
a great way to go to get free from your insecurity. Whatever it is you need to do, address the facts. If you can't handle criticism, then go after why can't I handle criticism? What is it that makes me so insecure? Because it's going to be good. Or stop life. being a business owner. Yeah. <laughs> well, the problem is, is that you could stop being a business owner and go work at McDonald's and you're going to get just <laughs> as offended. True. <laughs> That's true. You know, we always joked, but uh, when we had all the employees, I would always say, leave your feelings at home, you know, <laughs> and it wasn't that we didn't care about people's feelings, but what it was is, like Ethan's saying, you had to be able to take constructive criticism to improve, mm -hmm. and everyone around you had to be the same way. So even as the boss, I had to be able to take corrective criticism mm -hmm. and I expected my employees to be the same way. Now that doesn't mean that you're mean to each other, right. but it means you can't have your feelings on your shoulders and you have to be able to hear each other and work through the process. Yes. When you work together day in and day out and you deal with customers day in and day out, there's going to be things said that you don't agree with, and it doesn't matter that you agree on everything. Mm -hmm. What matters is that you work to a solution to make it uh, both sides happy in the mm -hmm. process. And so uh, leave your feelings at home <laughs> and figure out what you need to do to get better and help figure out what your employees need to do to get better mm -hmm. so you can be the best company that you possibly can be. And like Ethan said, I mean, obviously we're Christians and we stand on that side of it. Um, that's a big deal in how you represent yourself and others. Mm -hmm. But uh, regardless of whether you are or not, you need to learn to care about others the way that you care about yourself mm -hmm. and work through all those um, critics or people that disagree with your point of view because yes. you will run into them <laughs> yes yep for sure <clears throat> yeah i just yeah <laughs> you go, we go on you know maybe we'll have a different podcast on that too <laughs> there you go we'll write down another topic yes. now. one of the other points that um i was going to make was your customers um when you give them their survey or whatever oh actually that's what we used to do i forgot but um, on our survey, we used to ask customers, just a little checkbox, would you be willing to be a reference for future, yes. um, for future customers of ours? And um, that's something that it doesn't matter where you do that. You can do that you know, verbally and write down their information. But um, find a way to build up a spreadsheet of customers that you can give out their name, their number, um, when somebody says, hey, I'm thinking about using you, do you have any references? Yes. And it does happen. It doesn't happen all the time, but it really does happen. And it yes. would be great if you can say, yeah, you're doing a remodel about like this. I actually have two other customers that did a similar remodel. Here's their name and number. Feel free to call them. And uh, you yes. know, they're not family. <laughs> yes, because if you haven't approved it through them, don't give out their name. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> you might lose them. <laughs> they used to be a good customer. <laughs> oh. oh no, that's a good point. Uh, that was something that we got a lot of. And um, matter of fact, most of our customers that liked our work would bring that up, and they would say, um, "If you ever need a referral, mm -hmm. um, you're free to use our name and number." Yes. Um, but that's something that you want to get a list of people mm -hmm. and it may be, it may take a while for you to get a list of people that you've done different things for. But even if you have a list of ones you've worked for to where someone can call and just ask yes. how you were to work with and how you communicated and all those things, uh, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, for sure. And if you don't have that list yet, but you have a customer that's asking for one, um, you know, you if you have already done jobs for customers, um, then call them up and say, uh, "Yeah, let me uh, let me verify with a couple of them and see if it's okay." Mm -hmm. And then call call your customers and say, "Hey, I got somebody um, that needs to talk to one of my previous cl clients. Would you be willing?" So um, nice. just because you don't have that list yet, um, don't don't hesitate to call your previous customers because they might be willing. Yes. Yep. 
And then if you call all your previous customers and they all say, no, I'm not giving you my name and number for (laughs) reference, then go to our website and go to the help part (laughs) and Ethan and I can help you hopefully Uh, fix that problem. (laughs) Yes, there might be a big issue underneath there if your customers are not willing to be a referral for you. Uh, It's like when somebody's getting a job and they're like, hey, can you be a reference there? And you're like, well, do you want me to be honest or you might might not want my name on that reference. <laughs> I'll be a reference, but you may not get the yeah, job. You might not want the job <laughs> or get the job. Oh, uh, yep, yeah. All right. Anything else on customer satisfaction and promoting your future business? No, I think just to recap: do surveys, ask for reviews, get over your constructive criticism, and. Get references. Is there, there anything you go. else? Nope. I think that's good. Okay. Keep your eye out for our app that we will be releasing. Yep. And thanks everyone for listening. Yep. Have a good rest of your day. Oh, and share our podcast. Uh, if you are there enjoying you this, you know another, con- you know, none of this stuff applies to you, but you know someone else that needs help in their business, send them this podcast. <laughs> Let them know. Hey, this might be something you should be listening to. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to our podcast. Be sure to share this podcast with your friends and family. To ask us any questions that might get answered in our next podcasts, please visit our website, thecontractorfiles.com.